It's no secret that Mark Cuban owns the Dallas Mavericks. After all, we've all seen him at their games fighting with the referees, cheering them on, but how exactly did this come around and how did he lead them to their first championship in 2011? Stay tuned to find out all the answers. Before Mark Cuban bought the team, they were owned by Henry Ross Perot Jr. and weren't performing all that great. They had only won 40% of their games in the 20 years prior. And Perot, who had bought them in 1996 and had them for four years at that point, didn't help the team make any progress on the court, but off the court he did a lot for them, just not for the Dallas Mavericks organization, that is. Rumor has it that Henry Ross Perot Jr. was not interested in basketball and instead used the Dallas Mavericks and his position as the team owner to allegedly front other projects, most notably Victory Park. On January 4, 2000, Cuban purchased a majority stake in the NBA's Dallas Mavericks from Perot, who charged Cuban $285 million for the team. This purchase was just what the Mavericks needed over the next 10 years, as they went from an average of winning 40% of their games to an average of winning 69% of their regular season games, as well as reaching the playoffs in each and every one of those seasons. This was a difficult kind of investment for Cuban, who up until that point had only built companies from the ground up. This is why before immediately making any changes, Cuban went in to learn. He needed to look at the team and watch what they were doing in order for him to see what they were doing right, wrong, and what's working as well as what's not working. He then went on to analyze his observations and only after started making changes. Eventually, Mark Cuban helped lead the Dallas Mavericks to their first NBA Finals in 2006, where they lost out in a six-game series to the Miami Heat. This was after the amazing 2005-2006 season, where the Mavericks had their best playoff run and stayed toe-to-toe -to -toe with the San Antonio Spurs. After beating them, everyone was rooting for them to end up winning the championships, but unfortunately 2006 wasn't their year, as a motivated Dwayne Wade was simply unstoppable. However, with Cuban as their leader, the Mavericks only kept improving and finally won an NBA championship against the Miami Heat in 2011, getting their revenge on the team that beat them in 2006. However, the Christmas Day game of that year put these two teams against each other, with Miami coming out on top. This was a match many anticipated, but no one more than the Mavericks and Cuban, who wanted to show the world how they have improved and their new amazing skills. They came in prepared, and with the help of Dirk Nowitzki, who had just re-signed and after failing to sign many of the greats for that season, such as LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, Cuban has been the change the Mavericks have always longed for, because he has a very hands-on approach with the team, he cares about basketball, and is very passionate about the game. He didn't buy the team for money, but for his love and passion for the game, and even said in an interview with CNBC, I did it because I love basketball. He went on to say, this is a business. It is a business that I am willing to commit as much money as it takes, whatever energy, funding, to make this team successful. This is something that is very obvious because his approach is very different from the other team owners who choose to be in the shadow. Instead, he goes to most of the games and is very active in the spotlight as the owner of the Mavericks. For example, Cuban let Dennis Rodman stay in his house for a week before temporarily signing him. It was this passion and involvement that has helped Mark Cuban to gain the hearts of fans and become a fan favorite. These actions have also helped the team gain popularity. The wilder Mark got, the more media coverage the Mavericks received. The team went on with more risky moves by trading players minutes before the trade deadline that sent Hubert Davis, Christian Lettner, Courtney Alexander, Loy Vaught, and Itan Thomas to the Washington Wizards for Juwan Howard, Calvin Booth, and Obina Ikizi. They also became inclusive and signed Wang Zhiji, the first ever Chinese NBA player. To make the Mavericks more interesting to fans, it was time for a change in the look. This is why in the 2001-2002 season, the logo and colors have changed from the cowboy hat logo to a new horse logo. The team got new updated uniforms and even traded more players this season. Cuban was not shy when it came to trade-offs and always wanted to have fresh blood so that the best of the best will play for the Mavericks. After the purchase of the Dallas Mavericks might have only bloomed since Cuban bought them. However, Perot had retained 5% ownership and in May of 2010 has decided to file a lawsuit against Cuban, alleging that the franchise was insolvent or in imminent danger of insolvency. Cuban responded in a court filing in June of 2010, maintaining that Perot is wrongfully seeking money in order to offset his $100 million losses in the Victory Park real estate development. The case was dismissed in 2011 thanks to them winning the 2011 NBA Finals, and it becoming obvious that the franchise was not failing and was the most successful it had ever been. Perot didn't take this very well and was a very sore loser. This is why after the Fifth Circuit Court affirmed the decision in 2014, Perot attempted to shut out Mavericks fans from using the parking spaces he controlled near the American Airlines centers. 
Perot and his predecessor Carter's estate is still minority stakeholders in the Dallas Mavericks. Ever since their championship in the 2011-2012 season, the Mavericks haven't improved much. They haven't made it to another championship yet, but it somewhat seems as if Cuban has got cocky with his brutal trades and chose not to re-sign many of their good players. With that being said, the Mavericks are still one of the best teams out there and have made a few impressive achievements since they won the championship. For example, in 2014, the Mavericks dominated against the Los Angeles Lakers when they swept them with a win of 107 to 95 for the first time since the 1980 to 81 season. That same year, they also managed to record their largest win margin since 2010 when they won 123 to 70 over the Philadelphia 76ers. In 2015 and 2016, however, the Mavericks managed to get knocked out during the first round. This resulted in them attempting to make a comeback in the 2016 to 2017 season with help from their newest additions, Seth Curry, Harrison Barnes, Nerlens Noel, and Yogi Ferrell. Nonetheless, they didn't make it to the playoffs that season. In 2018, the Mavericks finally started getting some luck again when they traded for Luka Doncic, who was drafted third overall for the Atlanta Hawks, and this brought them into the beginning of the Luka Doncic era. Luka has tallied 41 points, 12 rebounds, and 11 assists, making him the first player in NBA history to record multiple 40-point triple doubles before the age of 21. This has helped bring them back into the spotlight and makes us excited for what Luka, Mark Cuban, and the Mavericks will do next. Perhaps led on by the fresh blood in the team such as Doncic, Porzingis, and Marjanovic, they'll begin to make deep runs into the playoffs. They currently sit in 7th spot, just inside the playoff berths, and if the season finished as it is today, they would have a very exciting matchup with the Clippers to look forward to. Thank you for watching the video, please let us know in the comments below what your expectations are for the future of Cuban and the Mavericks. Just a quick reminder that we post Monday to Friday, so make sure to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post our videos. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for our next video.